Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning into this video. I am Rahul, a project coordinator at the Northeast Big Data Innovation Hub, and I will be covering visual analytics concepts in this video. So what really is information visualization and why is it important? Generally, the first step of any data analysis process is exploratory data analysis and visualization. And it is extremely important because in its raw form, data in tables or CSV files does not necessarily make a lot of sense. Visualizing that information can help make sense of the data by providing us with adequate summary statistics. Histograms, scatter plots, or time series can help in the understanding of the data we have at hand and give us a broad picture of what we are working with. Even during the modeling or algorithm implementation phase, graphical representation of performance can help us monitor the change and progress between the time an algorithm takes to run as the input data size grows. This is a crucial measurement in machine learning algorithms since data is almost always growing. Also, Visualizations can help in presenting data to business stakeholders who may never want to dive deep into the raw data. With that, information visualization is not just limited to project-based implementations. Visual analytics is now an entire research field of its own where major research groups at University of Washington, Stanford University, and University of Maryland have been studying the science behind visualizations. It is said that visual analytics combines data analytics, human computer interaction, perception, and computer graphics together to form one output method of data exploration and representation. Let us now dive deeper into visualization specific to data science. It is best to follow this video with the Python notebook available at IBM's Open DS for All GitHub page under Exploratory Data Analysis section. Pandas is the most popular library for data analytics, thanks to its wide range of custom functions that help numeric, numerous analytical operations. For visualization though, matplotlib is another Python library of functions that goes well together with pandas. So generally in practice, analysts or data scientists use these two libraries in conjunction with each other. On this slide, we are trying to read an HTML file and converting it to a data frame using pandas. The plot function is then used to create a bar chart showing the timeline of the different CEOs for these companies. Now we know that visualizations are meant to ease the understanding of data and therefore it generally makes sense to build visualization only for summary statistics as opposed to the entire data set. With this comes a question of what specific summary statistics do we need to visualize? We will explore that in the coming slides. One way to differentiate these plots is by understanding the kind of target variable that we are trying to represent. For instance, on the left side of the slide, we are trying to visualize how long CEO stays in their job. Here, the variable companies is categorical and therefore a bar chart is more likely to convey the message. Let's say we want to track how many CEOs started last year. Here, the year becomes a continuous valued feature and hence a line chart is, more su uh, is a more suitable representation. Let's dive into further detail. Suppose we want to know how long company founders stay as CEOs. We can start by plotting the start year for every CEO, see what happens on the left. It's very hard to distinguish entries here. Also, it's a little unclear on how to interpret this. Of course, th that is a very odd way of doing things. On the right, we switch to how many years the CEO has been in the job and we can see that a few CEOs have been there for a long time and a few are very recent. 
Most have been CEOs for about 20 to 30 years. And this makes understanding the data and its interpretation easier. Let's explore another problem, the magnitude of data. Suppose we are plotting two different sets of performance metrics that were built from doing alternative big data computations over a set of operations as shown in the code snippet here. And we call them one, two, and three. If we put these into a common data frame and plot them side by side, we get the following graph. Note that it's not possible to understand what is going on in computation two because there is no representation for it in the graph. Why did that happen? It's because we used a common scale on the y-axis to represent data from a highly varied magnitude. To solve this problem, we used normalization techniques by normalizing scales of all the calculations made for the data, we give a fair representation to every computation to be represented on the same y-axis. Here we have used the apply function from pandas to normalize the values against the performance of the baseline. Now, inconsistent scaling is a problem not just for the y-axis magnitude, but also for x-axis entries as seen in this picture. If we look at the data as continuous valued, we see it's really a linear relationship. As seen here on the right, the image earlier is deceiving because it gives a sense of improvement towards the end of the graph when as the scale of input is increasing, the execution time is increasing and there is a straight consistent linear relationship. In addition to the considerations we saw earlier, some more presentation guidelines to consider are readability, color combinations, and printability. The font sizes and colors should always be readable and should convey the message shown by the plot. There are numerous visualization libraries in Python, but the two most used ones are matplotlib and pyplot, where matplotlib is best suited for static graphs and plotly allows for some fancy animations. Here are some examples showing a scatter plot, line chart, and a geographical imaging map. Here are some more examples of bar charts and flowing bar charts with a common distribution across the X and Y axis. From our discussions so far, we have been able to build some general rules to follow for constructing visualizations. Some considerations to make are proper representation of dimensions and coordinate spaces, differentiation between categorical and continuous variables, and most importantly, representation of data points on a similar and comparable scale. Let us now try visiting data visualization from a machine learning perspective. When going through a machine learning algorithm, there are some situations where visualization can help. Plotting the performances of various approaches can tell us which one is the best. Hyperparameter tuning and selection becomes easy. The amount of data and its dimensions that are affecting the algorithm can also be understood from visualizations. Though we covered some key ideas behind visual analytics, let's try to study some fundamentals of visualization and how they relate to machine learning. We talked about the importance of selecting the right axis and applying proper scaling to determine plot types. But what if there were a generalized set of principles that aided the selection of visualizations? ggplot, a very renowned data visualization package of the R programming language, divides plots into four distinct steps, namely layers, which hold the data being plotted. The type of plot, any statistical transformations, and positions of the visualization. And then there are scales that determine scaling transformations, the coordinate system for defining axes, and finally, 
there are facets that determine grouping. In terms of the definition of those metrics, as examples, histogram uses binning as a statistical process over the data and displays the geometry as a bar, while a density plot does a density analysis and uses lines to render this. Python also has an implementation of the ggplot package from R and can be used as shown on this slide. Now let us explore if there are any ways of automating the choices for visualization we talked about in the previous slides. This is where reporting tools like Tableau and Power BI come into place. There are some recent research papers that show that Recommender systems can also be used to automate these visualization choices. Let's now dive deeper into more advanced Python visualization. Matplotlib does not focus on statistical aspects of the data like showing confidence intervals or correlations. Therefore, we use Seaborn, which is an enhanced extension of Pyplot and Matplotlib and can be used for complex statistical data. Let us move into plotting using the Seaborn library. Seaborn is an extension from Matplotlib with built-in themes for colors, univariate and bivariate distributions, linear regression analysis tools, and ways of visualizing matrices and time series data. Here in this code, we see a scatter plot using Seaborn generated from random numbers. We can see that Seaborn allows for some additional customizations like aspect ratio and hue. Now in this plot, we see a Seaborn scatter plot. And in addition to the scatter plots, we now also plot a regression line through, through the scatter points that determines the closest squared distances from each point. And this can be added using Seaborn with just one additional parameter to the plot. In this plot, we are trying to study data relationships in a restaurant billing data set using a seaborn function called facet grid. Facet grid can be seen as a group by function. And here we have faceted the data points and split lunch versus dinner to see if they are different. We know that dinner is generally a more expensive meal and we might expect that businesses lunch are proportionally more common than business dinners. Here we have also used color to compare the day of the week, just to see if in any case a Friday or a weekend changes things. We see that Thursday has a significantly high lunch bill and so are the dinner bills on Friday. But would you have expected high sales for Thursday lunches? To explore it further, we can segregate the plots and see how the size of the party determines the total cost to see if that is correlated with Thursday lunches being high amounts. Although there are some six sized parties and numerous four sized parties, it is still pretty common to see two sized parties being the highest number. Pair plot is a seaborn visualization that can help make comparisons based on one target variable. Here we are trying to see how different factors like total bill and tip percentages are influenced by the size of the party. We can observe that as the party size grows, the tip percentage also generally seems to grow and so does the total bill, which can be a natural expected occurrence so we now know that the visual, visualizations are not deceiving us. Heat maps are another interesting plots that emphasize on the importance of some recurring events. Here we are trying to 
understand what the typical bill amount for different group sizes is. And since in our data, the most recurring party size was the size of two, we see on the heat map that the party size two inhibits high occurrence, but also is low on the total bill amount. While party sizes of six, although very less in occurrence count, pay a higher total bill. Box and whisker plots are a good way to understand statistical data distribution and most importantly to see if the data has any outliers. The lower line on the figure represents the minimum, in this case, the minimum amount of the total bill paid. As we move up, the price increases and the lower end of the box represents the lower quartile or the bottom 25% of the total bill amount. The line inside the box represents the median bill amount, while the upper end of the box represents the 75th percentile or the upper quartile of the bill. Finally, the topmost line represents the maximum and all dotted entries beyond the maximum bill amount represent outliers in the data. Through the second part of the video, we focused on building detailed visualizations using Seaborn which is a Python library that allows for robust statistical data analysis. Some of the plots that we covered were scatter plots, pair plots, heat maps, and box and whisker plots. Combined together, these are the most important statistical analysis tools that data scientists use regularly. And with this, we end our lesson on visual analytics. Thank you.